My name is Rodney Virick. I'm with the Space Weather Prediction Center, which is part of NOAA's National Weather Service. I'm the chief scientist responsible for the research that's done as part of the Space Weather Prediction Center. For space weather, there are many different, just like terrestrial weather, there are many different ways in which space weather manifests itself. One of the only ways that you can actually experience space weather yourself is when you see the aurora. So that we run this model now in real time and it provides a short forecast of about 30 minutes. Uh, so we give you a 30 minute warning to where the aurora will be and how bright it will be. That's the basis for this presentation. I have then taken the model output and modified it slightly to make it appropriate for science on a sphere and that's what you're seeing here. The model is driven by the solar wind. So between Earth and the Sun, there's actually a wind of particles and magnetic field, and this model takes that solar wind input. We have a satellite that sits partway towards the Sun that measures the solar wind, and from the measurements on that satellite, we then can predict where and how bright the aurora will be. And so it's a, it's a model that has developed just to do exactly that, take the solar wind and then predict where on Earth you can see the aurora. The aurora, as I indicated, was is, is originated from particles from the solar wind. These particles are sent from the sun when you have a major solar flare or s coronal mass ejection. You get a lot of particles traveling at very high speeds and when they come to Earth they interact with the Earth's magnetic field and th these particles will then come spiraling down Earth's magnetic field collide with the atmosphere and when that collision occurs you, it excites the atmosphere and that causes light, the light you see when you go out and look at the aurora. The data set actually does not have the chemical reactions. Uh, it's simply looking for essentially the brightness of the aurora overall. It's very challenging to identify the exact colors or forecast the exact colors because that depends entirely on the energy of the electrons that are coming in and that's not really uh, well captured within the model. So generally the model has the right color. Aurora is in general a pale yellowish green for the most part, um, but this particular model simply has a scale that starts with green as sort of less intense aurora and then turns red as it gets more and more intense, but the colors do not necessarily reflect uh, the colors, the exact colors of what you might expect to see. So if you imagine the Earth as a magnet, the aurora occurs near the poles because the magnetic field lines of Earth tend to come together at the high north and south pole. One of the things you'll notice is that if I put on here latitude longitude grid you can see that the aurora is not centered over the geographic pole. In fact it's centered on the magnetic pole which is somewhere up in northern Canada. So as the earth rotates and the aurora rotates with it, the aurora sort of sticks uh, much like the day-night terminator. Uh, it, it rotates uh, differently than the Earth, you can see that it's actually rotating about a point in the northern part of Canada and not rotating around the North Pole itself. This particular sequence is a 24-hour period and there's no way you could get a satellite to sit over the pole for 24 hours to capture the whole sequence. And what you're seeing is both the aurora get brighter and dimmer as the activity level picks up and also the Earth going in and out of sunlight and darkness as the Earth rotates and the, dif the Sun illuminates different parts of the Earth. Aurora is one manifestation of space weather, but it's one that's associated with many other different uh, manifestations and impacts. Uh, one of the most important impacts of space weather on our systems is the impact on our electric power grids. The electric power lines will pick up and have induced currents on them under severe space weather conditions, the aurora is a good indicator of where those currents are going to be most strong. So in fact, when the aurora reaches down into Canada and even into the northern parts of the United States, the electric power companies all know that they're being impacted by space weather and this allows people to look very quickly and, and, and get situational awareness on where exactly the aurora is and how bright it is. Another way in which aurora impacts systems on Earth is for the airline industry. The pilots would 
like to know they have asked us to tell them when they are near the aurora, not only because it's nice to be able to tell the passengers to look out the window and see the aurora, but also because the aurora is an indicator of where the situations can be severe enough to impact their satellite navigation, their GPS, and their HF high frequency radio communication, HF comm. Those are the primary ways in which they communicate with the ground. And so when they're near and in the aurora, both of those systems will be impacted. I think it's a great way to visualize the aurora because space weather is really fun to watch and beautiful to watch. If you could only see the aurora live, then that's one of the perhaps limitations. But it also shows people where the aurora is and how it changes and how space weather can reach from the poles right down to the parts of the world that they live in. So I think it helps bring space weather to a, to a place that people can actually start to realize and, and visualize.